Okay, so I felt like going through the notes for chapter 18 that I didn't focus enough on some of the more challenging questions. And I know this is the type of thing that um, even though the CPA exam is changing, this probably would be still part of financial reporting. It's still fairly important. So I wanted to do some more questions with you guys. So I brought in the packet of questions and we're just going to kind of work through them. I am also thinking that um, I may only test you guys on one chapter and then test you, so 18 and 19 separately. Um, I will ask for your input on that. I'll send out an email. Please respond to it and let me know unless you don't care. But um, I feel like 18 and 19 are so different that even though I'm putting them together, it's going to cause problems just trying to keep it together. Even when I'm teaching, and I know this stuff, <laughs> it's still sometimes I get in the wrong class or in the wrong moment. And so I want you guys to be able to focus on one thing. And so that's what I'm thinking. You'll get an email from me, um, part of the announcement. If you could just reply to it, I would appreciate it. If that's the case, what I'll do is you'll have one test this weekend on chapter 18. And then the next weekend would be on chapter 19, assuming we get through it in those three classes. It would be half, it would be 50 points each. And so they would just be netted together to be 100 points for the test. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we've got for the first question. So we have compute income taxes payable for 2025. And so let's talk about the pieces of that. You need taxable income. Multiplied by the tax rate, and so that's 20%. And so it tells us taxable income for 2025 is 265,000. And so we have 265,000 times 20%, and that's gonna be equal to 53,000. Okay. So now part B says prepare the journal entry to record income tax expense, deferred income taxes and income taxes payable. And so here we have income tax expense, which we don't know yet. We have potentially deferred tax asset. We have income tax payable. And then we could have a deferred tax liability. Okay, so we know income tax payable is 53,000. And what we have to do is look at what we have for deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset changes for 2025. So we have deferred tax asset 
January 1, 2025 is 12,000. Deferred tax liability is zero. Pre-tax financial income is 345,000 and cumulative temporary difference at December 35, giving rise to future taxable amounts. Future taxable amounts is a DTL, right? And then cumulative, cumulative temporary difference at December 35, giving rise to future deductible amounts of 120,000. So now, DTL equals 140,000 times 20%, which equals 28,000. And then the DTA balance changed from 12,000 and so we have 12,000 to oh and we have to calculate it to 120,000 multiplied by 20% and that's going to be equal to 24,000 now we have a DTA balance 12,000, so we subtract the 24,000 and we have a 12,000 addition to DTA. So your deferred tax asset is 12,000 and your deferred tax liability is 28,000. Okay, and then the last part. Is on here and so we have. Income before income taxes. And we can go back up. And we have. 345,000. And we have income tax expense. And we have current. Fifty three thousand plus deferred net twenty eight thousand minus the twelve thousand, and that is a liability, so it's increasing here sixteen thousand, and so that's sixty nine thousand. And that gives us net income of 276,000. Bless you. That's the taxes payable, our current 265,000 
Ah. Any other questions? Okay, let's take a look at example two. It says determine the amount reported as a deferred tax asset at the end of 2024. And so we have future taxable or deductible amounts. And in 2025, we have zero because it's not going to reverse until 2026. And so that's 2.5 million. Our tax rate is 20%. And so our deferred tax asset is 500,000. And so since we only have one year, two, or excuse me, one deferred tax asset, no liability, the totals are the same for that unit. And if you're wondering, they said the prior DTA equaled what? Now they give it to you, 1 million, that's okay. Is 1 million, and that was because the tax rate changed. So they had 2.5 million times 0.4, and so before it was set up as 1 million, now it drops to 500,000. So part B says prepare the journal entry if, if any necessary to adjust the deferred tax asset when the new tax rate is uh, enacted in the law, okay? So this creates an immediate expense for us because that's changing. And so you're gonna have income tax expense, 500,000, and your deferred tax asset, 500,000. Any questions?
Now, Part C says draft the income tax expense portion of the income statement for 2024, beginning with the line income before taxes. Assume no permanent differences exist. So we have income before taxes. So I'm looking for my pre-tax financial income. And so it looks like I'm gonna have to work backwards with that. Oh no, because it's just the current rate, let's see. Just trying to figure out what, why the pre-tax financial income, because it says there was no cumulative, no changes in the cumulative temporary difference and no permanent difference. So I'm gonna be able to explain this. So they have income before taxes, So you say, why are they the same? Because there were no changes in cumulative temporary differences and no permanent difference. In 2024. Okay, so we have income before taxes, and then we have income tax expense. And so that's the 7250000 And in this case, because there are no changes to the deferred tax asset, we have, we can multiply that by 40% because that's also our taxable income, right? And so that's our current. And that comes out to 2,900,000. And then we have an adjustment to to change in tax rate. And so that's 500,000 because we're losing a DTA so that it increases our tax number. And so we have total taxes of 3.4 million. And so our net income is 3.850 million. Any questions? Take a second to look it over.
So the confusion here for me is normally when I see a DTA or a DTL change, then I think we have a cumulative change. But the thing here is why our taxable income doesn't change is our amounts didn't change, just the rate changed. So that resulted in no change in the deferred tax reported. And that's why we could use the um, income before taxes being the same as the pre-tax financial income. If this amount had changed and somehow they were either going to have to pay more or less, then the deferred tax asset would change and you'd have in addition to current in this adjustment, you'd have either DTA or DTL in there. Okay, let's take a look at example three. Take a minute to read through it and then I will walk you guys through it. That's for the current year. So the point for it is uh, I'm afraid for 2026, but before that it was point four. Like where? So this 2.5 million, mm -hmm. the 1 million. So oh, you know that 40%. Okay. Sorry, I didn't do a good job explaining that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our entry here. We know that we're going to have income tax expense. Deferred tax asset. Income tax payable. And deferred tax liability. And so it says taxable income for 2024 is 150,000. So our income tax payable, 150,000 times, and our rate here is 0.4. The enacted tax rate for 2024 is 40% through 2026. And so that's 0.4. And so that's 60,000. Thank you. Okay, so let's go look at the temporary differences. And I apologize, it looks like I put this chart on the back for you.
So we have the installment sale. And another installment sale. And our future taxable amounts is 160,000 and 140,000. Our tax rate, 40% and 20%. Right, so we see that here. I saw, I apologize, I printed a little weird. I can't get that other artifact out of there, I'm sorry. And so we multiply the 160 by the 40%, we get 64,000. And 28,000. And then we also have a deferred tax asset for 210,000. And that's the accrual, loss accrual. And that is expected to revert when taxes are 40%. And so our deferred tax asset related to that will be 84,000. Uh oh, somebody activated the sticky keys. <laughs> so our total here, 50,000. Eighty-four thousand and ninety-two thousand. This is just the total. Did I miss? It? Read it. One forty. One sixty. One forty. 300? No, that should be 90,000, right? Huh. So deferred tax liability, 92,000. The deferred tax asset, 84,000. And so we plug the income tax expense. We have 152 here minus the 84. That's 68,000. It comes from this. Because it tells us the 2.5 million and the related deferred tax asset is 1 million. So 0.4 times 2.5 equals 1 million. You're welcome. That was what John asked. The other John, no H. No H. And then part B says, prepare the journal entry, if any necessary to adjust the deferred tax asset when the new tax rate is recorded in the law.
And so we don't have any adjustment because we have already accounted for the rate. And part C says, draft the income tax expense portion of the income statement beginning with the line income before taxes. Sorry. Indicate how deferred income taxes will be classified on the balance sheet as of the end of 2024. By the way, I leave this here because if you follow like the book process, if you want to write all that out, you can see how they go through that, but you don't have to be. You have a deferred tax liability net, and that's 8,000. And that comes from your DTL, which equals 92,000 minus your DTA, which is 84,000, which equals 8,000. And so this is reported in non-current liabilities. Okay. Take a minute to read example four. Okay, so the first one asks, what is the um, entry for income taxes that should be recorded for 2021? So it has pre-tax financial income or loss equal to taxable income or loss from 2026 as follows. So they're telling you that the cumulative differences don't change. Pre-tax and financial income are the same. And so we know that our taxable income for 2021 is minus 93,000. So times the tax rate of 0.2 equals 18,600. So when we have a loss carry forward, we have to look and say, okay, what amount are we going to be able to recognize? And so in recording the benefits of the loss carry forward, assume that it is more likely or not that the benefits will be realized. Okay. So we record a deferred tax asset. And that equals 18,600. And then we recur, we uh, have income tax expense, and this is a loss carry forward of eighteen thousand six hundred.
That's part A and part B. Part B says, indicate what the income tax expense portion of the income statement for 2021 should look like. Assume all income loss relates to continuing operations. And so you have operating loss before income taxes. And that was 93,000. I'm just making sure I got the right years because they made a mistake on the answer key. And then you have income tax benefit. And you have a deferred. And that's 18,600. And so your net loss is the difference between the two. 93,000 minus 18,600. And so that'd be 74,400. Part C, what entry for income taxes should be recorded in 2022? So you guys try that one. That I believe is 76,000. If it doesn't show up well in yours, I apologize. Remember, pre-tax financial income and taxable income are the same. Be right back. I get some water. You guys can talk to each other. I want to make sure my microphone's still working. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through this one. So it's asking us what entry for income taxes should be recorded in 2022. So in 2022, we had taxable income of 76,000 and a 20% tax rate. So income tax expense, in this case, 76,000 times 0.2. And so that equals 15,200. Okay. Now, are we going to pay this or are we going to be able to offset it from our loss carry forward? We're going to offset it. So we're going to reduce our deferred tax asset by 15,200.
Part D, how should an income tax section of the income statement for 2022 appear? So we have income from continuing operations or something along that line. 76,000. Income tax expense. Deferred. And that's 15,200. And so you end up with net income of 60,800. Okay, now you guys try E. Okay. You're welcome. There should be enough where you can take two, oh, stepping on your stuff, where you can take two of those and then pass the rest down. There will be some at the end, but my fingers can't separate them. So I will come back to this row in a second. It's supposed to print me 30 copies, but we'll see how it goes. Just check on this, so if I gave you more than two, please let me know. It looks like I didn't have as many as I thought I was going to. No, no, not of that. This is some extra ones. Since you're working on that, I didn't give you one, but these are, there's one on each side. Um, they're just to help you with the homework, um, you know, and answering questions. They are out there in Word and Excel form. So if you wanna use computer, you can use the computer on them. They're in the, uh, oh, I haven't posted them yet. I will post them in the module section. Okay, so now here we had a loss in 2024, so we have deferred tax asset. 
and this is 135,000 times 0.2, the new tax rate or the tax rate enacted. And so that's 27,000. And then you have income tax expense loss carry forward. 27,000. And then the last one, F. Operating loss before income taxes. And so that's 135,000. Income tax benefit. Deferred, and that's 27,000. And so net income, I'm sorry, that's a loss, is 108,000. Any questions? Okay, so I handed you out uh, the class notes for chapter 19. I'm not going to start it today because then most of it will be forgotten by the time we get here on Thursday. And so I'm just going to start clean on Thursday with this. But take a look at your handouts. I um, made a little adapted worksheet that I handed out to you guys that I think will help you guys. One of the things they do is they kind of put the debit and credit. They write it in. So if you look at my, in the Excel file, it has the debit and credit separately so that I can add those columns. Um, and so when you're reading through it, you can kind of see, and hopefully these are helpful for what we're gonna do in class and um, what you're gonna do on the homework. And I know it's a little early, but I'm sure I'll take up your time another time. So you guys are out of here for today and I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, everybody.